Hello there again. RC Rankirkus, July 1939 turn of Global War 36 to 45. I'm um, just going to give you a quick rundown. Uh, Germany has advanced mechs, jet aircraft, strategic rockets completed. They're working on the tech of sub advanced submarines. They have a few others that are started, but that's okay. Germany's sitting at about 42. Um, Whereas Italy sitting at 13, and then you got the British Empire with 22 and 14 for 36. Add another seven in there. We're looking at about, you know, where was I? 36, 40. They're at 43, right? And then you got the French at seven versus the uh, 13 of the Italians. So it's about even. A lot of this money, though, is uh, out of the theater of operations here. It's just building up for a potential Germany, or sorry, Japan. So yeah, those are the only four that are actually at war with each other. And then um, Japan's at war with the two Chinese factions in their civil war. Otherwise, everybody's at peace. Americans are a long ways to their full income. Russia's rolling up for its full income. And this is Russia's additional income, or sorry, full home territory wartime income. And this is their additional conquered territory income of five bucks. So if you're wondering why that's like that. All right, so I've got some purchases figured out on the map here. Um, first thing you do when your turn is repair units. So what we're doing here is we're spending five bucks to upgrade a fat medium factory, or minor to a medium. And we're gonna spend these 10 bucks to repair units. So this air base is operational, this factory is operational can be used this turn not that we have anything there to use it all right uh, um, <clears throat> now we're going to do some tech rolls here i paid for three well i paid for two and we got a free one i have also purchased nine advanced mechs they're the same cost as regular mechs they're just plus one attack and defense and i can bring two along to blitz so let's take a look at our tech rolls here um, Germany would like advanced submarines and they need an eight or higher. 11, that's good. They got advanced subs. Now the second one they want is that they want, um, wartime economy. That'd be handy. A little extra money. Another 11. Okay. Wartime economy. They got that one. And this is kind of like a Hail Mary. Would be nice to have buy one or two subs a little cheaper. So let's try improved shipyards. Holy, that was a twelve. I mean, regardless, everything's a, everything's a go. So Germany surprised me. They got advanced subs. Usually you fail a couple techs here. Um, they got advanced subs. They got wartime economy started. Oh, I got the defective one there. It's one sided. So we made all mine two-sided. There we go. And they started war time or improved shipyards. Done. So yeah. Germany had a really good three hits out of three tech rolls down here. Nice to see that for a change. Alright. So that's that. And these are the remaining uh, purchases that have to be placed on the map yet. Now we're going to move into our combat moves. I've got a few. So I'm just going to show them. You're going to show them from the back here. So we had a bunch of dudes in Bulgaria. We had a bunch of dudes in Yugoslavia. And they all moved forward. Um, I left the train and the, and the uh, railgun behind. The armor train and the railgun. Um, up here, I went for something a little different. I didn't want to fight another coastal gun, not after the what, what I saw happen to the Italians there, where they lost two destroyers attacking one of these things. So this transport here scooped a couple dudes up off of uh, western Poland and Stettin, a couple of Marines, and dropped them right in here. There's nobody to fight, so it's a done deal. But uh, I wanted to start bringing some units across the map here. Um, this really annoying um, combat air patrol is going to make it so I can't get subs out of the into the 
even at the English Channel. So I sent up two fighters and brought a sub through to see what happens there. And then over here, we've got a strategic rocket launched from here. One, two, it's going to aim at the major facility there. Uh, and this, these, these two here are attacking from Paris and all this other stuff is attacking from Picardia here where the strategic, strategic rocket is into Normandy. And these two uh, aircraft are from here. They've moved one, two, three. Ooh. Yeah, and they came from an airbase, so they still have two moves left. So should I blitz, I'm going to bring the tanks, the mech, and these aircraft over to there if I'm successful in three rounds or less on this one. All right. Um, that is the turn as I see it. So, like I was just saying, I just described what I was going to do to Blitz. So, let's just start there. All right. So, we've got, uh, what do we got there? We've got a fighter and a tactical. Let's roll them first. Tactical. Seven. That's a six. That's a hit. Perfect. I just need one more. Fighter at six. I'll count as a miss, even though she's, she was a hanger. Um, two tanks at six. Pair of twelve. Should we keep her own tick? Um, a mech at three. There we go. Two hits. That's all we needed. Now we have the the British and the French have a militia and an infantry there. So we're going to roll the militia first at two. That's a miss. And the infantry at four. Another miss. All right. So we were fully successful on round one. No casualties to the Germans. So these guys come off. And the tank will blitz over to here. Bring along the aircraft. And you don't really need to bring the mech, so we'll just leave the mech behind. Makes it harder for somebody else to attack here. Uh, you have to bring less less uh, units back later on. All right, so we're going to do the same thing we just did. It's against the same thing, infantry and militia. I don't want anybody to be able to land aircraft on this side and make it even harder on the Germans here. So we're just going to... Throw in a tactical at seven. Nice, that's one hit. And a fighter at six. And two tanks at six. There we go. We got our two hits. So let's do a militia back at two, miss, and an infantry back at four. Oh, that's one hit. All right. So on this one here. These guys hit, but I got one hit back at me. I'm just going to lose the regular infantry. All right. So there we go. And these planes have to land somewhere else. Just so that we don't forget what we're doing. They're going to non-combat move here into Paris on their fifth move from an airbase. All right. Okay, so those are those moves. Um, what we got here is um, a sub and two fighters against a seaplane. I believe the seaplanes are four and four attack and defense. Okay, and the sub is going to be attacking at three. Actually, a sub can't shoot planes, but the sub can take the hit from the planes. So I'm going to fight with uh, two fighters at six. Misses. Man, that's going to be going to be painful for me. It might be the Yugoslavia Navy all over again. And one seaplane back at four. Yeah, that's a miss, thankfully. So two fighters again. Okay, we got a hit. So the seaplane is done. And four or less for the seaplane in defense. Oof. Thankfully, that was a miss. So... We lose a seaplane, and it's no longer on combat air patrol because it's been—it's now deceased. 
All right. So there's that. That's another combat resolved. I'm just gonna leave that there so I remember to land those planes. Um, this one over here, even easier. There's nobody to fight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place a German roundel down there. So that's a German roundel. That's one for the Germans. Um, Normandy and Bordeaux in France are both worth one. So that's again one and one. So that's three up for the Germans. Um, this, however, affects the British. So the British are actually going to go up these and these. Right? So that's uh, two for the British. I have to uh, remember to move the British up two and the French down two. All right. Um, now let's take a look over here. What do we got there? Uh, we got a medium bomber, and we're attacking in a tank. Into there's no river we're crossing, but we are into mountains, so it doesn't matter. The, the penalty is the same. Um, so we are going to be rolling. Oh, we brought a commando, so everybody is plus one. So basically, all the land units roll as their normal selves, and the bomber gets a plus one. So instead of a medium bomber attacking at seven. It's going to be attacking at eight. All right. Easy enough. Medium bomber at eight. Hit. Okay. I need one more hit. So attack at six. Huh. Cavalry at three. Huh. Two infantry at two. Huh. Um, where did my mechs attack at again? Mechs. Are at three, so two at three. Again, no hit. So I got one hit on them. All right. So now we have mountain infantry in mountains, so they're plus one on defense. So they're rolling at five. So I got two at five. Whew, one hit back. All right. So we both we both traded one. It's difficult to put this down without knocking everything over. Both traded one, so I'm going to lose the cavalry, and they're going to lose. One mountain. Done. All right. Now let's do round two. And on round two, we've got a medium at eight. That's a hit. We're done. And they got one mountain and five back. And thankfully, that's a miss. So we're just going to fly over here again. We're in mountains, so we can't blitz, even though we have the range for it. We're just going to stop right where we are. And, oh, I need some more British roundels again. Start right where we are. I don't have a British roundel for those guys, but uh, we'll figure that out in a second here. So the Germans go up one more dollar. So the total increase for the German income is four. And... The British actually go up two, and that's it. So the British also go up two. I don't have enough singles on this side. I'm going to stop the video here, and then I'm going to show you my non-combat moves. Actually, we'll just move the British up. British up are two for this place. And Corinth is worth nothing, and Crete's worth nothing. All right, so I'm going to stop the video now. I'm going to do my non-combat moves. Actually, first I'm going to do the increases. So Germany up four, France down two, and Britain up two. Let's do the British first. British moved up two, thanks to the Germans. Um, the French moved down two, thanks to the Germans. And the Germans move up four, so from 42 to 46. And that's the changes on the board here. All right, I'm gonna stop here and I'll show you my non-combat moves next. Or we're gonna keep going because we still have a strategic bombing there. Um, so a strategic rocket launches one D6 attack. 
and it cannot be intercepted. So all it is is 1d6, and we see how much damage we put underneath that factory. That's it. That's all we're doing. All right, uh, four. So what we're doing now is we're just going to take a green three and a white one, and we're going to put those underneath this factory here. So the way this works is this has 20 damage, and each point of damage removes a unit it can build. So as this unit stands, it was able to build five, but with four damage, it can only build one. And all additional damage, it just makes it harder to pay off. You, know, you have to pay off more in order to uh, be able to produce anything. So any one point of damage, and you can only make four units instead of five in that factory. So I've got four damage. So now that instead of five, they're making one. All right, that should be self-explanatory enough, I hope. Okay, it's the German turn. We're just doing the conclusion. Uh, Non-combat moves. Those subs and uh, that sub and destroyer, just, they just move together into their... their um, I'm not sure what the British want to do, but we'll, we're just trying to draw more... some of that navy away from anything else that could be going on. Keep them busy tied up in the middle of nowhere. That's, that's the purpose. Um, all right, so what do we all do here? We had some non-combat moves. Rail from here, we railed two guys to there. From there, we railed one guy there, one guy there. Uh, the aircraft landed there. These aircraft from here landed there. Placed these guys, placed these guys. Moved a couple things around. Everything was a legit legal move. We're just basically putting some stuff over here. Moved a commander over here from out here. Didn't really need to be there. Um, still got the commander down there, swapped out the British pieces, swapped out the British pieces up here. Um, not really too much insanely crazy stuff going on. All that stack of tanks and mechs there, we moved some into the Paris there and the rest are up in here. Built five advanced mechs and four advanced mechs over there. Have to build them in home country. Um, yeah, oh, we also, uh, just, uh, slapped down the roundel in, uh, Romania, I gotta switch those units out, but that's a plus three income for Germany. I put it on the board and they get a plus three bonus. They get a bonus for, um, oh geez, I don't think I did that. So they got 40, uh, $49 regular income plus five from the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact plus one from the, uh, winning the Spanish Civil War. So that was what, 49, 50, 55 bucks. And they get an additional $3 in bonuses, bringing them up to 58 for having Romania. They lost this bonus of three. They gave two of it to the British and they took one permanently. Once they take this place, they're gonna get three plus the $3 bonus and a factory and blah, blah, blah. But first they gotta slog through all these British, maybe lose half the Navy, who knows what's going on. Uh, I've been negligent with the Netherlands. I haven't played them in a while. There was an attack in the sea zone adjacent to the Netherlands. They go up three dollars. So one, two, three, and um, there, there's I'll, when we get to the Netherlands. There's a couple of in, income increase rolls and other bonuses that were missed, but that's that's the one from this turn. Uh, Russia gets a D12 roll to increase its income because the Axis annexed or aligned something on its border. And they get a three, so they go up an extra three. And that's not their turns roll, one, two, three. So Russia's already at 29 from 26. Right, whatever you do can affect somebody else. Not always uh, the way you think. Um... Other than that, that's uh, it for Germany here. We're going to just gather up their money and switch those units out for black guys to match the rest of the, the color there. And uh, I'll see you in Russia's turn. Oh, Red Kirk is here again. I got um, July 1940, Russian turn. But before I get into that, there's a couple of uh, very helpful comments I got from you guys that are viewing my videos and uh, in the last turn wow I was uh, I, I missed a few things and my order was all over the place I apologize for that um, so from my comments I have GWN HQ 
noticed and I reviewed it and yet yeah, 100% I placed an infantry here and then I walked around and I dropped an artillery there too. That artillery or the infantry can't both be in this. This only builds one unit. So let's just drop it over here with the other artillery I built in. That's very true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Rookie move. Rookie move. And Chris Atkins. I have another rookie move. Um, let me just set this down here. You were 100% right when I attacked Yugoslavia with this fighter. And I died in round one. This transport couldn't run away to... Here, let me back up a little bit here. This transport couldn't run away to here and then get chased down because it already died. What happens when you have a transport and a ship in a, in a combat? It, it gets automatically killed. So you're right. I shouldn't have been moving that, that around either. Oops. So another correction. Um, and Stuart... Merkham, hope I'm saying that right. Merkham, Merkham, something like that. Um, I did do a like grade one, grade two math error. Apparently, eleven equals nine in my head. Um, yes. So when Russia was at seventeen, and they rolled an eleven, for some reason I gave them nine points and put them in at twenty-six. And on the Russian turn, I just went up three bucks, so I still need to go up. They should have been at twenty-eight rather than twenty-six. So I'm just going to adjust that and move them up to 31 now. Because they should have been at 28 plus 3 to 31. All right. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, there's a few other things I'm, that were in the comments. But uh, I knew I got some of them later on in my video series. Or I did it in the summary. Um, what else did it? Oh, yeah. Stuart Merkham also mentioned my uh, commanders. Uh, I do have... When Italy went to war with a major power, I gave them two commanders here in Rome. I gave the French one, but I forgot to give the British one. So thanks for pointing that out. Because the British have this commander here for going to war with Germany. Now they got this one here for going to war with Italy. There we go. Thank you very much. So yeah, there's like four, there's four commanders chilling out doing nothing in uh, London now. I'm going to have to move one of those somewhere. All right. And last but not least here, uh, General Hand Grenade sent me a message regarding the Spanish Civil War. And I have read this before, but I totally forgot about it. Um, so, forces. This is on page uh, 60. The Spanish Civil War, 1936 page, not the expansion. I thought this was an expansion item, but it's not. Um, victorious player can now takes all the forces from outland lands, can reconfigure them how you want. I thought you did that after you um, they aligned, but apparently you can do it right away. No more than one unit may be placed in Spanish islands or colonies. Naval forces must be set up adjacent to a Spanish naval base. Naval forces of the losing side are subject to capture. On So we roll a d12. 1 to 6, they become property of the victor. Or the nationalists, because they're the, the Republican ships when the Republicans lost. Or 7 to 12, they're scuttled or sunk, right? So, I put those ships back on the map. We got this uh, cruiser, destroyer, and a coastal sub. I just... Took them right off and said they were scuttled, but apparently I was supposed to uh, do a roll. So let's do a roll here. Let's hope for the German sake that they get a bunch of one to sixes. And let's zoom that back out again. There we go. And all right. So cruiser. One to six captured. All right. So the cruiser's captured. So the cruiser goes to the nationalists. Um, let's do the destroyer. That's a one. So the destroyer goes there as well. And the torpedo boat, or the coastal sub. 
Also a one. There we go. So all three of those ships that are gray down there are going to be reconfigured. Here, let me just adjust my stand here. So all three of these ships here are going to go gray, which is kind of kind of funky. Really, uh, I could have done that a long time ago. So let's get those guys out of the way. And we'll give them one of these and a couple of these. And these guys, apparently I'm supposed to line them up right now. So let's do that right now. And we'll give them a dude and a light tank down there. Let's give them a dude here. And... Yeah, it should work. Give him a dude there. Yep. I don't want to make it too easy for somebody else to walk in there and take it all. All right, so yeah, that's not a horrible thing if that happens to align to the Germans now. Um, yeah. And you know what? Let's place this stuff all up here. It's going to be just in the way down there with everybody ripping in and out of the med possibly so we're just going to leave these guys in this sea zone we'll give them a fighter over here too at the air base why not and leave the light tank with the fighter let's leave these guys all together i don't want to lose that fighter over nothing and they can that should be good enough there's a possibility to um, counterattack some stuff this way. All right. Um, so yeah, that's the Spanish. I, I man, I wish I'd, I'd known that. I've been doing that wrong every time I played this game. Thank you to all of you for all your comments. They make me play the game better. And it's hard to catch little rule book things like that when you're playing all by yourself. All right, so that's just basically my uh, adjustments for last turn. I might just stop this clip now, and then I'll just do the Russian turn. Uh, thank you all. See you later. Oh, RC, uh, Russian turn, January 19, or July 1940. Um, adjustments were made. They got their two, extra two bucks. Yes, 11 does not equal nine. Um, so I'm just going to give them a free, uh, an extra tech roll here. So they have the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact, so they get a free tech roll. And we're going to buy that. We'll say that's this one here, and we're going to buy three of them on top of that. So they're just going to roll four tech rolls, and we're going to buy five tanks for 30 bucks. All right. Um, and yeah, I corrected that as well. Can't have a can't place two units in this factory so the artillery I placed there since I already placed that uh, tree over there all right um so that's our place units let's just go follow the order of play here first thing you do before you do any of that stuff is you do some tech rolls so advanced artillery Russia's got stage one let's see if we can't get stage two seven right there sweet stage two advanced artillery now we're going to go wartime economy. They got stage one. Let's see if they can get stage two. And that's a one. That's kind of a hard dice to read. I'll try not to use that one too much. Um, what other ones was I going to do? They don't really need improved shipyards. Um, let's do advanced mechs. Those would be handy for Russia. Ten. Okay. Advanced mechs and artillery. And let's go heavy armor. They already got stage one printed on the map or on this sheet. Nope, fail on that one. So we've got two. That's uh, artillery to stage two and advanced mech stage one. Failed at heavy armor and we failed at the wartime income again. Doesn't really matter. They're not at war yet, so they don't get that money. All right. And yes, last turn we already did the roll because these uh, income increases happen immediately so when 
Germany aligned Romania. Russia did a D12 roll, and they only got three. But three is better than none for extras. All right, I got a couple of combat moves here to show. Um, I think I had a worse one of these two, and he just wandered in there. So we're going to take the final uh, Baltic State. Uh, we got a bit of a cluster going on here. I just left all these stacks separately. They're from here, from there, from here. Like tanks, wherever they can reach. Everything that's here is what I could get in here. So I got um, three, five infantry and artillery, two light tanks. And they're going against a fort and three elite infantry. So that's that one there. That's Vipiri. Uh, that one there is uh, Lithuania. Um, I'm not sure. There's nothing really in range that I can attack that's worth any money from there. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those in non-combat mode. But I'm going to have to figure out something. Because they're just a waste of time sitting over there. Um, these guys, Afghanistan is not worth a victory point for me. Because it's not worth any money. So I'm probably going to bypass that. But I got nothing else really in range. And I don't want to attack that with just a single cavalry. So we'll have to move those guys in non-combats. And then we got this stuff going on here. Um, this dude just walked in from uh, Nova Brisk. No contest. Um, cavalry wandered into that one. The infantry wandered into that one. And the Russian controlled planes that are actually Russian and not strictly land lease. I've decided that they're going to temporarily leave because Russia's allowed to operate its aircraft in there as a land lease. As though they are in lease, but they're still technically Russia's aircraft, so they go on the Russian turn. Even if the so, I'm just going to borrow two of them from there, and we're going to wander in here. And then the CCP is going to do an attack. They're just going to bring half their forces that were here down into there, and the tactical against that one infantry. And oh yeah, the CCP have eight dollars in the bank, so they're going to buy two mountain infantry as well. All right, um, yeah, I'm just trying to be a thorn in the side of Japan on that side as much as I can, because that'll keep forces away from the Russian um, Russian border, and then maybe we'll get that point from them. All right, so the tech rules are done. Um, I'm going to do it right now, since I'm thinking about rolling. Technically, this happens at the end of the turn. But Russia is going to figure out what it's going to get for uh, income increase rule. So we're just going to roll this D12. And look at that. It's a whole two. All right. So just so that we don't forget to do it. I'm actually going to go one, two. Not, yeah. It, don't ask me how I messed up that math so bad. But uh, apparently I did. So. All right. So, let's do this here first. This is uh, Russian now. Uh -huh. So, this is going to be Axis controlled, but uh, it has no units. Let's, let's do these little fights here. This is going to be pretty simple. So, this one here is a cavalry. At, oh, it's crossing a mountain border, right? So, first round, it's going to have a mountain penalty so it's going to attack at two and the fighter doesn't get a penalty and let me know if i'm incorrect on this but the fighter did fly from where a commander's at so does it get the commander bonus or does the ccp commander bonus only apply inside of china itself i'm going to roll as though it doesn't but uh, let me know if it does so the fighter is at six that's a hit anyway so doesn't really matter. Now that uh, defending cavalry is going to roll itself. Uh, hopefully, nothing higher than or nothing lower than a two. Eh, two. Man, they took me out. All right, so that's a mutual. Fighter killed that. Cavalry killed that. This stays theirs, and the aircraft's got to fly home can't take it with aircraft and I'm not going to lose a plane when I could lose a horse. 
All right, next one. Militia at two. Infantry is attacking at one through a mountain border. And the fighter at six. All right, so infantry at one. Hey, look at that hit. Good enough. Um, militia at two. That was close. I didn't want to lose both of them. All right, so militia missed. Infantry hit. So Russia's going to take that one. Uh, that means Russia goes up a buck. And this guy can probably just walk over there next turn and take that place. So there we go. So that is that. All right. So, well, since we're here, let's do the CCP one here. So that's two infantry. They, the river's on inside their own territory, so it don't count. So no river penalty. Two CCP attacking at two. And one tactical coming from the commander's location. So he's going to be bumped up plus one. So instead of seven, he's an eight. And I don't care about target select since there's only one unit. So one at eight. Hit. Good enough. All right. Now let's see if that uh, infantry can roll a four or less. Hmm, I can't read that. There, a nine. Okay. All right. So that's a miss on the Japanese missed and the CCP hit. So let's take that Japanese round off and we'll slap down the CCP. <laughs> the Japanese buggered off and they turned into a civil war. I think I know who's going to win this one. All right. Um, there's that. And this aircraft is going to fly back down there. And I'm just going to fly these two back down there as well. All right. Um, now we're going to go on to the rest of the combat moves here. We've got this one here. It's a no contest. There's no combat occurs. It's just a walk on. And Russia claims that. So Russia goes up another buck. So that's $2 for Russia so far. Um, here, I'm going to use their extra money. So same as I was doing with the Germans. Russia got one in Mongolia. And they got one from Lithuania. This Russians increase. Let's see if they can get another dollar here from Vipiri. All right. Um, now, I'm just going to knock all my dudes off the, off their purchase here. Let's put that in there. The prayer is going to be fairly simple, so let's see if we can't get that figured out. Uh, we got one artillery first strike at, oh, are we crossing a river? No. Okay, the river's on our side, not their side. So, one artillery first strike at three. Miss. All right. Um, one infantry supported by artillery at three. That's a hit. Um, four infantry at two. Ooh, that's a second hit. Just need to get one more here. Two light tanks at four. Nice. Three hits. And that is three elite. So let's see what they hit back. Um, so they got a fort. I'm just going to double check on one of my cheat sheets here. Nice thing about all the reference sheets, they have forts, uh, fortifications is something you can build. So they give you all the details right there. Combat bonus round one of combat plus two all land units. So damn, these guys are elite. So they're going to defend at five, but they get a plus two to seven. Okay. And two attacks at five from itself. So we got those three elite infantry that are going to be plus two. So instead of attacking and defending at five, they defend at seven. So three at seven. I can't believe that. And seven, 
seven, eight, ten. So only one hit. And then we're going to have two shots from the fort at five. Six and a ten. Fluky. We'll take it. I'll take it. All right. So they got one hit back. And if you were the Russians, you'd probably just lose this infantry. Because it makes it easier to just chip those guys out. And he's the cheapest unit on the board here. There we go. So you lose that infantry. These guys are gone. The fort is now gone. The forts don't stay when you take over the land. It would be nice if Gibraltar still had his fort for the Italians, but they got to build a new one if they want to keep that. Um, all right, so Russia goes up another dollar. Let's put that down here. Russian and a dollar. So now Russia's got everything that uh, was available through the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact. They walked into these three. They combat mo on combat move. They fought whatever was in these two and they fought whatever was in here. Now they got to stop and leave this as a buffer. And Germany agreed not to align these guys against Russia or at all or to not align them and take possession of them. It's not even going to control them. It just leaves them alone. All right. Um, so, yeah, that was a dollar, dollar. Oh, I think I put the third one in there already. Okay, so three for them. And the CCP goes up two bucks. So let's go to them. And Japan goes down two. Russia's increases came from neutral, so it doesn't affect anybody. So Russia... Already rolled their income increase. Now they're going to take their land increases. And I use that on this one here. That way I don't artificially stop rolling too early. Um, so. Mongolia. Latvia. Vakuri. So they're up to 8. Plus 33. It's a nice little 41 in the bank. Um, CCP. They're going to go from 4 to 6. And Japan goes down on the same two to 26. CCP keep knocking Japan down. Japan's going to have to either deal with them or just let them have it. All right. So CCP, they need to place a couple of mountain infantry. And if you were them, would you do any non-combat moves first? Uh, da, da, da. You know what? We're just going to place two mountain infantry right here. Right on the border. I'm going to non-combat move this dude into there. That's that's a hub space. It touches everything around it. So We don't want to lose that one to the Japanese. That would be very, very bad. All right. So now we're just at collecting come and place units. Um, I got six tanks to place and I got no tanks anywhere here yet. Uh, I don't really want to put my tanks right too close to the border, but at the same time, you know what? Yeah, these are my regular tanks. I wanted to make sure I wasn't putting down my KV-2s because you don't need heavy tanks everywhere. So one, two, only one there this time. Three and they got four or five left, so we have two more to go. So, um, let's throw one in the capital, never hurts to have a good dude in the capital like that. And this stuff is this is three away from the uh the border with Germany. So, if they do their first strike, surprise strike thingy, this guy's gonna be out of the range. All right, so that's that. Um now, time to collect money. Um, CCP has $6 on the map, so they're going to collect 6 And now you'll see why I just did what I did with Russia. Because they get plus 1 for every territory that touches a Russian-controlled territory. So they get one here for Sinkiang, but now they also get one here 
for Shan Z because this is Russian controlled. And this technically counts as the Russian border with the with the with the Japanese, right? <clears throat> so they get two bonus income. So they're back to eight. And Russia, the only bonus it gets is that free tech row we did and the three bucks from the Molotov Ribbon Trout Pact on top of their 33 home territory income out of the 46 and the eight extra territories they own. So let's give them their eight and 33, but we'll just get to take two of these off and give them an extra fiver because I don't have enough ones if I start doing that, giving everybody stacks of ones. So, Russia has 20, 30, 44 dollars in the bank now, and it's not even at full income. All right, that is still 13 away from full income. <clears throat> Next turn, who knows? Depends on what kind of things they roll. All right, so that's the end of the Russian turn. Let's see what the Japanese do in retaliation. And oh, non combat moves should probably do some of them. Since even though I placed some stuff, we're just going to move these guys over to here. This guy's going to stay here as a buffer. Um, you know, this guy's just going to move up into here. This place is worth nothing. Nobody's going to attack it unless uh, they want that. Um, my question for you is what would you do with Russia? I absolutely despise the fact that they gave us the new rule that you can't attack this to bring in the U.S. into the war. Honestly, I thought that was the most stupid, stupid thing ever. So if Russia attacks South America, I never allowed the U.S. to go to full income. I thought that was just a gaming backdoor thing. And why limit Russia by giving the U.S. too much good stuff, right? I mean, if the Axis come in there, yeah, that makes sense, right? But Russia's just attacking neutral countries. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but apparently, according to the new rules here, I can't do that anymore. Unless So there's nowhere else to really go. Um, the British might let me through, through over there and we can get there, what, one, two, three with the transport from a Navy base. Do you want to bring all the guys? You can't really attack anybody unless I declare war on them. Everybody in there is aligned, but, uh, you know what? Let's do that. And remember, Russia is all about Russia right now. And I'm just trying to gather up as many points as I can. And I'm leaving these two guys there on purpose. That way I don't just lose this to the first taker that walks by. Because that would be a handy Navy base to pick up for somebody, right? Especially the Americans. And if I left it empty, then they'd be at war with me right away. So, let's make them fight for it if they're going to attack it. Um, so, the Russian Navy's down here. The transport is empty. And the only other neutral countries that are lying around is they can, that are worth money is they can probably pick up that, uh, what is it, Portuguese East Africa down there. And maybe Iraq. Other than that, they're going to have to start to i have to start declaring war on somebody. But uh, Russia doesn't want to be way the heck out there. And if they're down in Iran here, they can uh, get some dudes in a hurry. Especially if Russia builds a $8 rail extension from here to go down to southern Iran. They can start actually rolling into that maybe. Oh. Yeah, or maybe into this or this. Or maybe they'll take Turkey next. Not sure what Russia's going to do. Um, and Russia's got this sub here. I keep forgetting to move. So one, two, three. Let's bring those two stacks together. All right, Russian navies. 
Uh, and that's where this, no, this coastal sub's doing a good job of being kind of like a semi half, halfway blocker for the Russians, and it only moves one a turn, so why bring it along? Yeah. All right, that's the Russian turn. Quite a bit longer than I planned, but uh, there you go.